Welcome to our lesson on stoichiometry and mole ratios. In this lesson, we'll learn what stoichiometry is and how to determine the mole ratios that are central to all stoichiometry calculations. I like to say that stoichiometry is something that's as fun to do as it is to say. Stoichiometry is going to involve calculations of quantities of substances, both reactants and products, in the chemical equations. The calculations will always begin with an amount of one substance. So we're always going to have one substance that we're going to start with in a chemical equation and ask us to determine an amount of another substance in that same chemical equation. For example, in the equation N2 gas plus 3H2 gas yields 2NH3, we could ask, be asked to determine the amount of ammonia that's produced from a given amount of nitrogen. We could be asked to, produce, to calculate the amount of hydrogen needed or needed to produce a given amount of ammonia. We could be asked to determine the amount of nitrogen needed to react with a given amount of hydrogen, or essentially any combination of calculations involving reactants, products, or any combination of the two. Let's start off by using a familiar example. Everybody knows what a tricycle looks like. Here's our tricycle. In the typical tricycle, we have several important parts. We have a frame, which we're going to denote by an F. We have a seat. We need three wheels, one handlebar, and two pedals. And together, that's going together, come together to make our tricycle denoted by the FSW3HP2. Note that for this, the formula does not indicate the arrangement of the parts. Now, assume that you are the manager of a tricycle plant. You want to make a tricycle. And you want to make 100 tricycles. How many pedals would you tell your pedal manager you need to make 100 tricycles? Well, most of you immediately think, well, I know I need two pedals, and per tricycle I've got 100 tricycles, so I'm going to make, I'm going to need 100, uh, 200 pedals. How did you know the answer to that? It's something that intuitively you feel. Now, for those same 200 pedals, how many wheels would you need to go with those 200 pedals? Well, once again, you'll look and see, well, I need three pedals. I have three wheels, sorry, for every two pedals on my tricycle. And so I'm going to come up with an answer of 300 wheels to go with my 200 pedals. Again, the way you knew this was by using your intuition and your instinct for putting together these ratios on a familiar object. Cooking is often used as an example here, and it's something that you could use as well to think about to help you to understand the concept of stoichiometry. In stoichiometry, we're going to make use of ratios. These ratios are going to be the numbers that relate one item to another. So we're going to take one item and we're going to relate it to another through these ratios. And these ratios are going to become our familiar conversion factors from dimensional analysis. For instance, in the previous examples, if we looked at the number of pedals per trike, we would say that we need two pedals. Here's our two pedals from our balanced chemical equation for every trike. So here's our trike in here, relating one side to the other. Or if we wanted to relate the wheels to the pedals, we would say that we need three wheels. So here's our 3W, 3W up here, for every two pedals that go into the trike. So here we have two components being related to each other. Now, let's see how this works in a true chemical equation. In a chemical equation, the coefficients 
could have many different meanings. And one of the things that's important is we have to be dealing with a balanced equation. If we don't have a balanced equation, you're going to have to balance it. And we'll have some practice with that later on. So here's our familiar reaction again. Nitrogen plus three hydrogen gas gives us two ammonia gas. One of the ways that we can think about this is that we have one molecule of nitrogen reacting with three molecules of hydrogen to produce two molecules of ammonia. We could also think about it in terms of moles. We have one mole of nitrogen plus three moles of, ammonia, of, nit of hydrogen, sorry, give us two moles of ammonia. You notice the ratios aren't changing, the numbers aren't changing, only the way we're identifying, the way we're describing them is changing. You could think about this in terms of mass, but mass becomes a little more unwieldy because we have to bring in the molar mass. So one mole of nitrogen is 28.02 grams. Three moles of hydrogen is 6.06 .06 grams. If we bring those two together, we'll make two moles of ammonia, which is 34.08 grams. Or if we look at this from a conservation of mass, we'll have 34.08 grams of reactants going in and 34.08 grams of products going in and coming out. One thing that's going to happen is later on in the year, we'll also see that we can relate this to liters of a gas as long as all of the materials are gaseous. What we're going to do, though, for now, is let's focus in on the mole ratios. In this equation, we're going to have one mole of, of nitrogen gas is always going to relate to three moles of hydrogen and two moles of ammonia. And what this is going to do is give us six ratios. Let's look at what those ratios are. In our first set of ratios, we're going to relate the nitrogen to the hydrogen. So here we have one nitrogen on top, one mole of nitrogen. Since we're using mole ratios, actually let's stick down here. Since we're using mole ratios, let's always put the word mole between the number, which is the coefficient in the balanced chemical equation. Remember, there's an implied one up here, one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen. And we're going to put the three moles of hydrogen down here. And we can flip it around as well. We can have three moles of hydrogen on top and one mole of nitrogen on the bottom. Another set of ratios is going to relate the nitrogen to the ammonia. So one mole of nitrogen will produce two moles of ammonia. One mole of nitrogen divided by two moles of ammonia. Two moles of ammonia are produced from one mole of nitrogen. And finally, the third set of ratios, we have our hydrogen and our ammonia relating to each other. Three moles of hydrogen produce two moles of ammonia. Two moles of ammonia are produced from three moles of hydrogen. You may notice that in this process, we're going to get one ratio for each combination and its reciprocal. So each pair is the ratio of the two parts of the reaction and its reciprocal. And what we're going to do next, in the next lesson, is we're going to use the ratios to connect the wanted amount of some, product, of some substance in the reaction to the given amount. And we'll see this in our next lesson. For now, what I want us to do is focus in on actually determining mole ratios. So what I want you to do is find the mole ratios for the following reactions. Here's the first reaction, four aluminum are reacting with three oxygen gas and giving us two aluminum oxide. The video is going to pause now. I want you to figure out what ratios they, you have and to write them down on your, on your notes sheet, on your worksheet that you have. And then once you've got them written down, restart the video. Okay, I'm assuming that you're restarting the video now after having written down the the different, uh, different ratios. For this reaction, since we have three substances involved, we're going to get six ratios again, and here they are. So as before, we're going to relate all of the, both of the, the reactants to each other, so the aluminum and the oxygen get, re, get compared in the first two sets of, of ratios. Next, we're going to compare the aluminum to the product, the aluminum oxide. So we have those two sets of ratios. 
And finally, we're going to compare the oxygen to the aluminum oxide, and we get our final set of ratios. Now, as you get bigger in reactions, you get more products and reactants involved, you're going to get more ratios. Here's a reaction that involves four substances. Again, the video will pause, write down all the, all the ratios that you can think of, and restart the video and see if you've come up with them all. All right, so you've finished writing down the ratios, and here they are. For this reaction, since there are a total of four substances involved, we're going to get a total of 12 ratios. And if you get bigger and bigger in the number of, of items associated in the reaction, you'll get more and more ratios. Fortunately for you, we're not going to continue writing down all the ratios. Starting in the next, re next lesson, we're going to only focus in on the, the ratio that we need. To get a better understanding, you can go to section 12.1 in the book, pages 352 to 357, and I'll see you at the next video.